everybody, JC here from Toy News International. And today I'm here, I want to talk to you guys about the new Star Wars The Last Jedi movie. Now, if you've not yet seen the movie, I am going to tell you to quit watching this video right now. This video is going to contain spoilers. Now, I will tell you that I like the movie. I, I, I love the movie, in fact. I've seen it twice now. I saw it Monday when it, at a press screening and then saw it again opening night last night. Both times I thought it was great. Um, didn't like it any less the second time. In fact, I think I liked it a little bit more the, the second time. So I'm not going to say it's the best movie in Star Wars. I think that title still goes to Empire Strikes Back, in my opinion. But definitely it's right up there. And I do have a full non-spoiler review up at JediInsider.com. I'll put a link to that below. So if you haven't seen the movie, please check that out before you go. And then once you've seen the movie, come back, watch this video, listen to my thoughts about it. And please feel free to share your own thoughts about the movie in the comments section. Okay, so now that we've gotten the warning out of the way, let's talk about the movie. Now I'm not going to go over every point of the movie. I, that would just make this video too long, unfortunately. But I am going to talk about things that I really liked about it, the things I liked the most about the movie, and a few things that I didn't like. This is definitely not a perfect movie. I'm not saying it's a perfect movie. There are definitely some flaws with it. I think there's flaws with every Star Wars movie, even the original trilogy. So, um, you know, this movie is no different from that. But overall, I thought they did a really good job with it. And the thing I liked the most about it was all the different plot twists they really kind of threw out the standard Star Wars formula. I mean, the thing I disliked the most about Force Awakens was that the overall plot was just such a carbon copy of A New Hope, you know, replacing the Death Star with the Star Killer base, replacing BB-8 with the plans, uh, or R2-D2 with plans of the Death Star with BB-8 with a map to Luke Skywalker. All of that was just, you know, so reminiscent of A New Hope that it just made the movie seem very unoriginal. And I thought they did a great job of fixing that problem with this movie. There's certainly, you know, it definitely ha continues to have a Star Wars feel. There's definitely aspects that are very much Star Wars in this movie. But again, I think they did a good job of shaking things up and not just doing a repetitive replay of like Empire Strikes Back or what have you. So so definitely I think that is a real positive in, in favor of this movie. I will say that... If one of the things you did not like about Force Awakens was just the characters themselves, the new characters, if you didn't like Rey, if you didn't like Poe Dameron, if you didn't like Finn, and if you didn't like Kylo Ren, then you probably won't like this movie that much. Also, I understand if you don't like it as much as I do. I think Star Wars is one of those movies that has expanded over so many different generations and depending on when you came into Star Wars, you know, really has an effect on how you view Star Wars and what you think Star Wars should be. For me, I started watching Star Wars as a kid with the original trilogy and even somebody who started watching Star Wars as an adult with the original trilogy, I think will have a different take on things. Um, so that's just, you know, Star Wars. And so I think it's next to impossible to create a movie that everybody's going to like or like equally. So, you know, I've seen some of you say you liked it, but not nearly as much as I did, apparently, or some people who said they just hated it and things like that. So I understand the, how, why there's such varying opinions about a movie like this. But again, for me, I really enjoyed it and thought it was one of the best movies that they've done. Now, before I go into more things I liked, I, I do want to touch upon a couple things that I didn't like so much. So I thought some of the CGI scenes were a little iffy looking, especially in 2D. The first time I saw the movie was in 2D, and the second time I saw it was in 3D. The movie definitely looked, you know, those scenes looked better in 3D than in 2D. But even still, there was a few where it was a little bit iffy. Uh, a couple scenes on the casino planet, and then, like, the scene where BB-8's riding around on the ATST without the head. It was a cute scene, but definitely, CGI-wise, it was looking a little bit iffy. I also did not like the way they did the scene with Princess Leia when she gets blown out of the ship. I know what they were trying to establish with that, or at least I'm pretty sure I know what they were trying to establish with that, and that's the Princess Leia or, or Leia is this powerful Jedi, just like Luke and, and Vader and, and all the other Skywalkers and everything. And she's got the same blood. So maybe she doesn't have the formal training that Luke did, though at this point we don't even know if that's the case. Obviously at the end of Return of the Jedi she didn't have any formal training, but there's nothing to say that Luke didn't start training her after the events of Return of the Jedi and up to the point of Force Awakens. So we don't know how much training Leia's actually had, but regardless, she is still a powerful Force wielder, 
And I think that's what they were trying to establish with this scene. It's just that I don't feel like they did a very good job with it. It just looked kind of corny when she's like floating there through space back to the airlock. And, and again, I think they could have done that a little bit better. I will say though, that when she first got blown out of the ship, the first thing that I thought was, oh my God, they just killed Princess Leia. Uh, mainly because, unfortunately, Carrie Fisher is no longer alive, and at some point they are going to have to kill off the character, I imagine. And I didn't think it was going to be in this movie. They had pretty much finished shooting all of her scenes in this movie, and I hadn't heard anything about them changing this movie that drastically. So I, I, I was kind of surprised, but I was like, oh my god, they just killed Princess Leia when that first happened. So that definitely kind of had a huge impact. It, you know, I quickly realized, oh no, she's not dead, but... But like I said, the very first time I saw it, I was like, oh my God, they just killed Princess Leia. So so definitely had an impact moment with that. Right. So what I liked about the movie was all the different twists and turns. They would take you one way and then go a totally different way that you weren't really expecting, I think. And they did that a number of times. So like, for instance, with the whole Poe Dameron and the his thing with the the general the Laura Dern character or Admiral whatever she was but but the Laura Dern character and and I thought that was really good because you know they kind of started creating this adversarial thing between the two Poe had been uh, basically uh, de demoted and basically he had tried to pull off this plan with the taking out the dreadnought which they succeeded in taking out the dreadnought but at an extreme cost and i like that aspect of it because you know while they're all everyone's celebrating the the dreadnought being taken out and everything you know you see leia there and you see how you know she's looking at the screen with all the you know showing all the destroyed bombers and how that really in, is impacting her and that's Overall, one of the things I like about this movie is I'm somebody who's kind of viewing this movie more through the eyes of these older characters, Princess Leia, Han Solo, and Luke Skywalker. And I really liked how they kind of showed how, you know, when you think about it, these characters have essentially been fighting a war of some type their entire lives. Leia since a young kid, Luke is a young and adult. And, you know, you're seeing the impact that's having on them. So even something that maybe is a victory, you know, because of such a huge loss of life, Leia wasn't viewing it as a victory. And so I, I really like that dynamic of the movie. And same thing with Luke. You know, that opening scene, you know, at the end of Force Awakens where Rey hands Luke the lightsaber, you think that's such a climactic scene. And then the first thing Luke does is toss the lightsaber over his over his shoulder and then goes and shuts himself off in his hut, basically because he's shut himself off from the world. And I, I think that's a very powerful scene. Again, you know, put yourself in, in Luke Skywalker's shoes. He is this person that has had this tremendous bear in his entire life, first being essentially the chosen one to defeat Vader, which he does, and basically saving the rebellion, which he does, then becoming this great Jedi master, which he does, and then failing because he let Kylo Ren go to the dark side and essentially let Snoke come to power and the First Order reclaim, reclaim control. And so that has to have been a tremendous burden on Luke. And, you know, the fact that basically he went to this island not to, like, find secrets of the Jedi that he could use to defeat the bad guys, but basically to hide from the entire galaxy and die. I mean, that is just a, a very, you know, powerful thing that I think they established in this movie and did a pretty good job of showing that. I like how they did the dynamic between Rey and Kylo Ren. Again, leaving you guessing, you know, is which one is going to turn? Is Rey going to turn to the dark side or is Kylo Ren going to turn to the light side? And there were multiple times in this movie where you weren't really sure which way the characters were going to go. Kylo Ren telling, you know, casting a shadow of doubt on Luke. Did Luke go crazy and try and kill Ben, which caused him to become Kylo Ren? At first, you know, you got to admit, you were wondering, is that what happened? You know, Luke later explains that that thought crossed his mind, but then he had stopped himself. But by that point, it was too late and Kylo Ren had attacked. But but again, that was a, kind of a very interesting plot twist to make you think that maybe Luke had gone off the deep end. Um, and then, you know, was was Ray going to basically want to get away from Luke and go run off to Kylo Ren? Um, and then in the scene with uh, her and Snoke and, and, and Kylo Ren, you know, when Kylo Ren takes out Snoke, it's like, 
did Kylo Ren just turn to the light side? And then, you know, and they're sitting there fighting all the elite guards. And it's like, oh, my God, what, what's going to happen now? You, I had to remind myself that this was a second chapter, not the ending chapter. And I was like, you know, you know, it, it, what's going to happen now? Because, you know, Kylo Snoke's dead and Kylo Ren looks like he's turning to be, be a good guy. And then you have Snoke go back to the dark side and then he's reaching out his hand to, to Rey and he's like, you know, join me. And you're like, you know, she looks like she's really tempted to do so. So you're wondering, is she going to take his hand? So I thought all of that was very well played. Now, would I have liked to have gotten some more background on Snoke? Sure. And I think, and I put this more on the blame of Force Awakens than I do this movie. But one of the things that has still been lacking with these new movies is establishing you know how we got from the points of return of the jedi to the points of force awakens how did you know end of return of the jedi we've got you know the rebellion is victorious and and peace has been restored to the galaxy and then by the time of force awakens we're basically back to where we were uh with uh, a new hope and everything so you've got the empire of the first order back in control and you've got this powerful sith who's in command of everything and how did all that come about I mean, it took Palpatine decades to basically gather up his power base and take control, whereas the Snoke guy seems to have almost done it overnight. So, you know, those are things I would have liked them to have fleshed out a little bit more, which I think they should have done in Force Awakens, and is still something that I hold against Force Awakens. And honestly, at this point, I don't think they are going to. I think they will continue to make little hints and stuff, but I think they're going to keep that essentially let you speculate. We might see that play out in the books and stuff, but I, I don't think they're going to spend much time in the movies, unfortunately, fleshing that, that aspect out, which is a little disappointing to me. But I, I still like how they played out that scene and how they killed Snoke and everything and how they had Rey and Kylo Ren, and you didn't know if... Kylo Ren was going to be a good guy or, or if Rey was going to end up being a bad guy. I thought they did a very good job of that throughout the movie. I also thought, and I know some of you have a problem with this, I thought what they did with Rey's parents was brilliant. Basically saying, you know, after years of speculation of whether she was going to be a Solo or be a Kenobi or be a Skywalker, that essentially they say her parents are nobodies and that they just sold her off for, for money and then abandoned her. I thought was a brilliant thing to do and sends a very powerful message that you can basically, you're a nobody and you can rise up and accomplish great things. And, and I, I think that's what they were essentially saying with all of that. And so I, I, I know, again, some of you were expecting something greater there, but I really thought that was a brilliant move. I think it would have been more cliche -ish if they had made her a Kenobi or a Skywalker or a Solo, to be absolutely honest with you. So, again, I thought that was actually a very interesting plot twist that you really didn't see coming and that I really enjoyed. The whole thing with the cave, that was an interesting scene. Now, this is my interpretation of it. And, you know, we may never know what they were really intending, but... I feel like that was the whole thing about the dark side was that the dark side lures you by basically trying to show you that it can provide you something that you're missing. You've got this hole inside of you that you need to fill and the dark side is teasing you with saying, I can fill that for you. And so with Ray, it was finding out who her parents were. And so she basically goes down there in the cave and she sees herself and you know all the different you know that long line of herself and it takes her to that mirror and then she you know the mirror clears up and she sees herself and i think the message there was that you are what you make of yourself that you are who you make yourself to be and you, it doesn't matter who your parents were or or what have you it's up to you to determine who you are the I do think there was a missed opportunity with a cameo scene. So I love the cameo by Yoda. I thought that was great. Maz makes an appearance. So if you were a fan of her in the first movie, I think that was a nice way to kind of throw her into the movie. But I thought something that would have been a great opportunity was when they go searching where, where Finn and Rose go searching for the, the code breaker, that the guy with the plume should have been Lando Calrissian. I mean, Lando is the one... Uh, original character that has been missing from these movies so far he could show up in the next movie he could be part of one of those uh, resistance that they were hoping were going to show up and or, you know one of their allies that they were hoping were going to show up so he could end up being one of those people that shows up in the next movie I don't know 
but I just thought that a perfect opportunity would have been Lando there at the, the craps table or at that casino table with the balloon. Now, obviously, they got, you know, arrested and they never got back to that guy. So, again, it would have been just a cameo scene. But I think that would have been great if, especially if they don't end up bringing Lando into the movies at all, that would have been a perfect opportunity to at least have a cameo for him to be that guy with the, with the rose bloom on, on his chest. I thought the DJ character was very good. DJ was kind of the anti-Lando Calrissian. I mean, essentially, Lando started out basically portraying the the good guys, and then ends up basically you know helping them out to save the day. DJ ends up starting out helping the good guys, but portrays them to the bad guys, essentially be, you know because he's only looking out for number one. So I thought that was an interesting twist with him, and I, I really enjoyed the DJ character. I thought the ending scene, so the whole thing with the Laura Dern character and, you know, basically them thinking, making you think that the main plot here is going and destroying the tracking device on the Star Destroyer and that's going to save the day. I thought that was great because they obviously failed in that. And so you're like, oh crap, now what? So, and really, no, this is really the plan. We're going to sneak off to this old headquarters and hide out and let the First Order just keep going. Um, you know, I thought that was a very interesting twist to that whole middle part of the movie. Um, so again, I, I thought they did a really good job with that. And then like when they're down on the, on the planet fighting the, the first order and everything with those junked up speeders, I mean, I thought, I thought they were quite possibly going to kill Finn off when he was making the suicide run. We had already seen it with, with the Laura Dern character, which again, I thought was very powerful when, when she uh, takes the ship and goes into hyperspace and rams it through the ship. And then it's kind of the turning point where then Phasma gets taken out. And I thought, even though Phasma never really kind of lived up to expectations, I, I don't think, I thought that was a very powerful ending scene for her to take out unlike say like Boba Fett I thought that was a really good way for her to be taken out again a little surprised they took her out in this movie but but again I thought was 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 pretty good and let me just backtrack a little bit the whole thing with the porgs the porgs I loved they didn't overdo the porgs they made good comedic relief but it wasn't like they saved the galaxy. They basically were just background characters the entire movie. The scene with Chewbacca where he's about to eat one of them I thought was pretty funny. Um, so again, I thought that was great. Also, the scene with Luke and R2-D2, that was another one where you kind of had to hold back the tears where, you know, the message from Leia from A New Hope comes on. I thought that was a great scene. And when he's in the cockpit, when Luke goes into the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon and he grabs the dice and everything, I thought that was a very powerful scene. And then the ending scene I is probably the reason why I really love this movie is the ending scene where Luke comes and basically the resistance is on the verge of total extinction and they've pretty much given up hope and Luke comes, Luke is the new hope, remember, and he comes there at the last minute and I thought that was just a powerful scene. The first time I saw it, I thought it was powerful. The second time I saw it, because I knew what was gonna happen, I thought it was even more powerful and one of those scenes where you really had to hold back the tears um, it just, you know, it just really hits you, especially with the music, the John Williams music. I mean, I, I'll admit the John Williams music really helps make these scenes powerful, feel more powerful than maybe if you didn't have that. But I love that scene. He comes in, he sits down next to Leia. Now, something I didn't pick up on the first time I saw the movie, when, when he takes Leia's hand, I think Leia realizes at that point that Luke's not really there, that he's just a, a spirit force or whatever you want, a projection or whatever you want to call it. So I, you just see the expression on her face, and obviously, you know, when they touch, you know, you could get to probably realize that, oh, you're not really here. But, like, she doesn't admit it because, you know, she doesn't want them to know that he's not really there. But I think you can tell by her expression that she realizes that he's not actually really there when he takes her hand. So I thought that was a really good scene. Um, and then he goes by 3PO and winks at him. I thought that was a nice little nod um, to their, their relationship. And then he goes out and he stands in front and face down the entire First Order army. This entire scene, I thought, was fantastic and very well done. You know, first of all, they, like, open fire. He's, like, take fire everything at him. And so it's, like, they are, like, firing everything they got. And, and Hux is, like, looking at Kylo Ren, like, are you crazy? 
And I think that's an interesting dynamic between those two characters because I think, like, if you look back at Vader, the thing about Kylo Ren, and I think some people don't like Kylo Ren because they think he should be a Vader. That's what they look to him as, is to be the next Vader. And I think that's the tragic thing about Kylo Ren is Kylo Ren wants to be Vader, but he's not. So you've got basically him constantly trying to uh, live up to the legacy of Vader and always coming, you know, falling short. And I don't think people, like, while people were scared of Vader, I also think that the, you know, the people, the officers in the Empire also respected Vader, whereas, like, Hux does not respect Kylo Ren. I think Hux sees Kylo Ren for who he is, a spoiled child who throws tenter tantrums. And only reason he follows Kylo Ren is because Kylo Ren has this power and could force choke him and kill him in a second if he so chose. But, you know, I think that's an interesting dynamic. But I, that whole scene and then he's like the smoke clears and Luke is still standing there. And that's a great scene. And then Kylo Ren and he's like and Luke's like, I mean, that was just that was classic. I, I love that. And then Kylo Ren comes down and they face off. And then they like, you know, and he runs at Luke, Luke shuts off his lightsaber and he runs at Luke and you think Luke is, you know, they're going to pull a, a Obi-Wan Kenobi where, you know, Obi-Wan's like, strike me down and I'll become more powerful. And, and so you think that's what's going to happen. And then Kylo Ren turns around and Luke is still standing there and it's like, whoa. And I, I thought that was really well done. And then, you know, when you realize that Luke is like a spirit or a projection and he's not really there, I mean, I, th I thought that was great. So, and just, and I also like, you know, the moves that Luke made in that lightsaber duel battle. I mean, you know, I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, if you go back and you watch the original trilogy, the, the fights between Luke and Vader, they're very static. They don't really move around a lot. I mean, especially if you compare it to like the lightsaber duels in like episode one and, and things like that. You know, they definitely got more acrobatic and stuff with their lightsaber moves and stuff as the, as the movies went along. So I thought it was kind of cool to see Luke actually do some kind of cool acrobatic type moves and stuff in this fight scene. So I like that. And then, you know, just, you know, Kylo Ren saying that the 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 resistance is dead and that the last he last Jedi is about to be dead, be killed and everything. And, and then Luke just goes... Everything in that sentence is wrong. And and then showing Ray coming and saving the, the rebellion and every or the resistance and moving the rocks and everything. I just thought all of that was very powerful. Now I know a lot of you have some issue with Luke essentially dying at the end. And I will admit, my first thought is, you know, why did he die? He he wasn't even really there. And and so I was first thinking, well, maybe he just had to to exert so much life force energy to project him across such a great distance that, that it just wiped him out and, and that's what killed him. But then I got to thinking, and, and this kind of came to me more in the second screening than the first, is first of all, does a Jedi really die? Um, you know, if you think about it, you know, I think it's more that they go on to the next stage of of their life than that they're actually dying. And so I think, I don't think Luke really died there. I think he just basically what they were trying to say was that he found the balance that he was so desperately missing from his life and that he had finally found that balance with the force and was now ready to go on and chose to go on to the next stage of life. I have no doubt that we will see Luke again in the next movie. He'll just be a spirit in spirit form. So, you know, I don't think he really died. So that scene did not really bother me at all. And I thought it was a very powerful scene with how they had him looking up into the twin sons, very much like he did when he was much younger on Tatooine. And just, you know, again, finding that inner peace. I mean, if you if you listen to Ray when she's talking to Leia and she says, she doesn't say, I felt Luke die. She says, I felt Luke move on. And there was contentment and, and peace. That is, you know, again, so they didn't kill Luke. They just had him move on. He chose to move on to the next level of existence for the Jedi, which frankly, I think is a more powerful existence than the, than having the physical form. So that's how I view it. So that scene with him disappearing into the wind and everything did not bother me in the slightest. And I thought it was very powerful and very well done and a very fitting ending to Luke's physical existence.
I think it would have been more cheesy and more of a cop out if they had had like Kylo Ren take Luke out. Again, it would have been episode four all over again with Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi. So again, I thought this was very original and very well done. Now, what is going to happen in the next movie? So this is just purely my speculation and theory, but you've got to realize, and the irony here is out of all the original characters, the one that's still alive is Leia, who unfortunately in real life is the only actor slash actress that is no longer living. So it's kind of an irony there, but as far as I know of, they've done no shooting of, you know, before she died, they had not done any shooting for episode nine. So it's not like, you know, with episode eight, they had pretty much were done. So her death did not drastically affect that movie. But I think, you know, they probably are having to make major changes with how they were originally going to end this and how they're going to do it now. So my theory is, and I think the kids that we see at the end of this movie, the one with the broom and everything, who obviously has Jedi powers, I think is part of that. But I think what you're probably going to see is something along the lines is we're going to jump in time significantly. So like this movie took place right after Force Awakens. But I think episode nine, you're going to see some significant time passing, maybe like 10 years or something even. And you're going to see the resistance has rebuilt itself. And of course, the First Order is still very powerful and everything. And Kylo Ren has grown in strength in the dark side. And Rey has become much more of a seasoned Jedi and possibly learning from you know Leia and everything. And either you're going to see Leia killed at the very beginning of this movie. I mean, you could do something probably minor with CGI like we saw with, with Rogue One and such. So you might see something along those lines and have her being taken out maybe by Kylo Ren. I mean, one of the things that I thought that was interesting about this movie was that Kylo Ren did not kill Princess Leia or, or his mother, essentially. You know, he had the opportunity to take her out in the TIE Fighter, and he chose not to. And so that, again, was him struggling with the light and the dark side. He didn't hesitate to kill Han Solo, but he could not bring himself to kill his mother. And so I thought, I think originally maybe what they were going to do is that she was going to be the one that reaches Kylo Ren and brings him back. Though he may not... You know, he may not get redemption. He may be unique in that he really doesn't get redemption. So I don't know how they're going to exactly play that out. So maybe he kills his mother. He finally, you know, has become, you know, all goodness is gone. And he finally kills his mother at the very beginning of the next movie. Or maybe she's already dead or something along those lines. But I think you're going to see a significant jump in time. And you're going to see that the resistance has rebuilt itself. And some of these kids that we're seeing at the end of this movie will probably play a role that they've joined the Alliance or the resistance and, and our new Jedi and such. So I think, you know, again, I don't know exactly how they're going to end things or anything, but I do think that how they're going to address the, the loss of Carrie Fisher is they're going to jump ahead in time and basically have her be dead by that point or dead at the very beginning but that she's going to have had, made, played a major role in rebuilding the resistance by this point so that's how i see it and so that's i'm going to wrap this up because i could go on rambling about this movie again i love it i've been you know thinking about it since i saw it first on monday and just you know think it is a really good movie so i'd love to hear your thoughts again i understand if you don't think it was quite as good as i do and again, I would love to hear your thoughts as to why. Also, if you hated the movie, I'd love to hear your thoughts why. You know, definitely let me know in the comments section below. And until next time, guys, I will catch you later.